Hi children, today we are going to start a new lesson, Vectors. Before we start the topic Vectors, we should know what do you mean by a vector. The simple idea of a vector is, it's a physical quantity which contains a magnitude and a direction. What do you call a magnitude? Magnitude means we should be able to talk about largeness or the value regarding to that physical quantity and as well as we should be able to discuss about the direction of that quantity. What is this quantity and the direction problem? So if you talk about your age, if I say my age is 10, we can talk about a largeness, there is a magnitude, but does it talk about any fact related to the direction? No. Therefore, the age is not a vector quantity. We call it a scalar quantity. Later on, we will understand these deviations much clearly. Then, if you talk about a velocity, velocity is a vector. For example, if I say velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, there is a magnitude and as well as from an arrow we can say along which way you travel at a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, towards north, towards east, towards west or some other direction. Therefore, when you are talking about velocity, we discuss about the magnitude 100 and as well as we can talk what is the direction where this 100 kilometers moves on? Therefore, it contains a magnitude and as well as a direction. Then we can call it as a vector quantity. Another very good example for a vector quantity is force. Then if you talk about a force, we know that what is the magnitude of the force? We can say 100 newtons. Oh, 50 newtons, there is a magnitude and if you talk about a force, we can understand we should mark a direction along which way you make a push or pull. Then there is a magnitude available as well as we can discuss about a direction as well. Therefore, you can say force is a vector quantity. Vector notation then we know that if you represent any vector in a certain place, we should be able to identify, yes, this quantity is a vector quantity. Therefore, we mark a vector quantity from a specific notation. That is what you learn in this slide. We know that if you say, if you mark some kind of a point A, if you make A, we can discuss about the magnitude of A. If it is so, it is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. But in a specific place, if you discuss about a quantity with a magnitude, a largeness and a direction, in such places we should be able to clearly understand, yes, this quantity is a vector quantity. Therefore, we use special notations for a vector quantity. The first notation is a graphical notation or a graphical representation. We can mark a vector by an arrow and the length of the arrow exactly represents the magnitude of the vector and the direction of the arrow represents the direction of the vector. So the first notation is we can show it from an arrow directed toward the x direction where the vector works out and it is a first representation of a vector. The second notation is you can mark it by a bold letter, bold letter A for example, this is bold letter A that is 2x plus 3y. So we know about the Cartesian coordinate system that means a vector A 2x plus 3y is alone x axis 2 units and alone y axis 3 units and if you mark this point, the vector from origin to that point would be the vector quantity A. We will learn this kind, this example little later. The third 
The next example is vector b 3x minus 2y plus 5 is it. We call these are 3D vectors. When we learn advanced techniques in vectors, we learn what is a 3D vector. For the moment, just keep it as it is. Then the next notation is we can represent vector a and you can put a letter a and put a dash under that. So that is another notation. Both notations are used in different uh, books. So vector a dash that is called vector a is 2x plus 3y. The same vector I have mentioned in another, not another notation. The next notation is called the matrix form of a notation. Hopefully you have understand these matrices in grade 8. Then you can say the same vector as 2, 3 as a column or 2, 3 as a row. So in that case, this is another notation of vectors. Anyway, when you represent a vector, you have to understand that that is represented by a bold letter or uh, put the letter and put a underneath uh, some kind of a small dash. Now let's see how to add two vectors. The first method is we discuss about graphical view. In the graphical view, there are two techniques we use. The first technique is called the triangular method. For example, if you want to add two vectors A and B, first of all, draw the vector A from its magnitude and the direction. At the end point of A, as shown in this diagram, mark the next vector B. You can add any, any number of vectors following up this sequence. First vector at the end point of the first vector, mark the second vector. After marking all the vectors, for this question we have already marked only two vectors. If you adjoin the line from starting point to final point, that would be the final result or the addition of vectors A and B. In other name, we call it as the resultant vector. So hopefully you can understand the first method. We have to mark the vectors one after next and marking the points in initial point to the final point represent you the resultant vector or the addition of these vectors. Next method is called a parallelogram method. In parallelogram method what we supposed to do is mark the two vectors A and B starting from one point as shown in the diagram along the same direction where the vector exists. Then complete a parallelogram which starting with two quantities A and B as shown in the diagram. There are, and after that if you mark the diagonal of that parallelogram, that diagonal represents the addition of these two vectors or we call it as the resultant vector. But remember that this parallelogram method you can use only you have two vectors. But the previous triangular method you can use any number of vectors to add that once. Hopefully you understood how to add two vectors. Let's start up with this question. We have to add two vectors a and b. Vector a is 2x plus 3y, vector b is 4x plus y. If we add these two vectors a plus b, you can say it's 2x plus 3y plus 4x plus y. The same way we did this addition of the algebraic terms, you can say you can add this x component separately and y component separately. That is 2x plus 4y, 6x, 3y plus y, 4y is the first representation. If you use the matrix notation, a plus b is 2 plus 3, we wrote it as a column matrix and 4 plus 1 as another column matrix. Therefore, you can add the first row 2 plus 4 separately and second row 3 plus 1 separately and you can obtain the same answer 4, 6. The first one is x and second one is y. Okay children, let's try to see from this diagram as well you get the same answer. So if you mark vector a 2, 3 alone x axis 2 units and alone y axis 3 units that is vector a. Vector b is 4x plus y alone x axis 4 units and alone y axis 1 unit. Hopefully you can clearly see vector a and b. 
then after that in a way of getting two sides vector a and b we construct a parallelogram if you construct the parallelogram the diagram the diagonal of the parallelogram represents the resultant vector a plus b so you can understand that that turns up into how much 6 4 it's clearly you can get this answer if you follow up the triangular method initially i mark vector a two units and three units after that vector b starting from vector a i just mark uh, four units alone x axis and five units alone y axis that gives you the final answer six four therefore it's clearly from the triangular method paragraph method or just algebraic addition method you get the same answer Now let's try to verify this theory from another example. We need to find the addition of vector p plus q whereas the vector p is 3x plus 2y and vector q is 2x minus 3y. When you are marking these vectors you can understand that I just mark these vectors from bold letters or you can put a letter and the uh, small dash under that. So that's other though. From you can use two representation both representation to represent a vector if you add p plus q that is a simply addition of 3x plus 2y plus 2x minus 3y then you can add the x components separately and y components separately it turns into the answer 5x minus y then if you use the column matrix notation i am working out the same question children uh, then if you write 3 2 plus 2 minus 3 so you can add the first row 3 plus 2 and second row 2 plus minus 3 you receive the same answer then let's see how to work out this question from a diagram initially I just mark the vector p 3 2 you can mark you can see it as 3 2 and at the end of that diagram I just mark 2x minus 3y that means alone x-axis 2 units and alone y-axis minus 3 unit that represents vector q then the initial to final represents the final vector p plus q that gives you the answer 5x minus y you can clearly get it from this diagram even you get the same answer 5x minus y at the end so whatever the way you use you should be able to get the same answer this is another important part in vectors multiply a vector by a scalar then if you get vector uh, if you multiply any vector by a scalar you can simply multiply these x components and y components with the same scalar fact for example if you get vector a into 2 that you get the two times of vector a for example if a is 3x plus 2y if you want to get 2a that is 2 times of 3x plus 2y then if you multiply you can multiply the x components 2 into 3x and as well as y component 2 into 2y just the usual uh, simplification of brackets just the same technique we use then you get the final answer 6x plus 4y if you use the vector form sorry the matrix column matrix format even you get the same answer you can see two times of matrix 3 2 if you multiply 2 into 3 it's 6 2 into 2 it's 4 you get the answer 6 for the same answer how to represent 2a in a diagram or rather graphical representation you know 2a you can write a plus a then initial i just mark uh, the vector a 3x plus 2y and after that again I will draw another 3x plus 2y that gives you the final answer 6x plus 4y from the graph itself you can understand you get the same answer 6x plus 4y the next important theory is minus vectors that means if you get a vector a what is minus a that is the other important point where we need to understand let's try to understand this concept from an example 
if you get a vector a 3x plus 2y what is minus a simply you can multiply this vector by a minus mark if you multiply by a minus mark you get the answer minus times of 3x plus 2y that turn up into minus 3x minus 2y from the column matrix form even you can try get the same answer minus 3 minus 2 then from a graph if you mark a and minus a both having the same length same magnitude but only the difference is direction is completely opposite hopefully you understand what is a minus vector the next theory is difference between vectors suppose that we need to find vector p minus vector q4 vector p is 3x plus 2y and vector q is 2x minus 3y if you want to find p minus q you can write p plus minus q then in previous uh, topic we already learned what is a negative vector therefore if vector q is 2x minus 3y you can say minus q is minus times of 2x minus 3y therefore you can add vector p 3x plus 2y to minus 2x plus 3y so if you multiply 2x minus 3y by minus you get minus 2x plus 3y hopefully you understood then you can add the x component separately and y component separately therefore turn up into 3 plus minus 2x 2 plus 3y with that you can get the answer x plus 5y same question if you work out with uh, column matrix form you can say 3 2 minus 2 minus 3 with that you can do the usual matrix simplification and you can get the same answer 1 5 that is x plus 5y uh, that is the answer so if you refer to this graphical method so if i mark vector p 3 2 along x axis 3 units and y axis 2 units p q 2 minus 3 along x axis 2 units and y axis minus 3 then i have marked vector p from blue color and vector q from black color then if the uh, ve if vector q is representing uh, black color you can see the minus vector q representing red color if vector p is 2 minus 3 we know that uh, vector q minus vector q should be minus 2 plus 3 so you can clearly see the black color arrow and the uh, red color arrow then if you want to get p minus q from the graph what you can do is you can add vector p plus vector q same way uh, what we did in the previous question so with that the starting point to final point represents vector p, p minus q you can get the same answer 1 5 other than that you can say it's 1 x plus 5 y hopefully you understood this concept and you may uh, you may learn this concepts much clearly hopefully you and hopefully you enjoy my video therefore put a big thumbs up and subscribe my channel